in your opinion, why do you think children should watch theatre? Uh, because theatre, uh, I find, is more engaging than, say, TV or film, something like that, because you can almost change your formats to suit the audience. You can't do that with TV. Exactly. Yeah. It's just a lot more interactive. So, like, the whole audience participation thing, which kids love. Like, if you go to the pantomime, I always remember the bits where, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, he's behind you, kind of thing. Yeah. So, it engages the mind, and when you let them, they a massive imagination. So. Yeah, and e even though TV does have that, obviously it doesn't work as well, because it's, mm. because it's TV. And on TV, um, yeah, I don't think you can get, like, vibrant costumes and stuff. That you see in pantomimes, which again, kids love colours. Even, and even if you do, though, even if you do, that it doesn't look the same as it would like. No, exactly. So you think it's more about the live experience? It's yeah, just the fact that it's physically there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not related to it anymore. It's like visceral. It's great. And it's most of the time it's not. Well, it is scripted, but it's not. You get me? So things can change. And stuff. Mm. Um, in terms of the purpose of sort of educational piece. What do you think is most important in education or entertainment? Or do you think? I think there needs to be a balance. Mm -hmm. Because, go on. I think you can't get an even split of both. Like with Pinocchio, we've favourited the kind of entertainment yeah. side. But there are educational bits in it. And I find that if you just pack it full of educational stuff, they're not going to listen. Yeah, no, I was just going to say that. If you get, if you get a good balance of Entertainment and they enjoy it, but yet still learn something. Yeah. Like it. If it's entertaining and it's got an underlying theme through it, if it's entertaining, more likely to listen. Yeah. For example, like songs and stuff like that. Mm. So. Mm. Okay, well um, what's the purpose of using music in your piece? When? It's just what we were talking about, isn't it? It's just yeah. having or well, catch a tune, they remember it. And if it's got lyrics that are even like an educational message, they're more likely to get what the message is. Remember. Yeah, and that's stuck in the head. And it also breaks it up a bit, doesn't it? If you like, yeah. if it's full on for a bit and then you have a song, you're almost just like, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, again, it's like an interactive thing. If a song's easy to learn, you know, if, if they hear you singing it and it's just simple words, they'll want to join in. Yeah, and that is why it's good having the educational stuff in songs. I find songs stick in your head more than the lyrics. So, yeah. well, so if you yeah. say don't cross a road with a red light, you're going to remember it more than if you say don't cross a road with a red light. Like, don't cross the road with <laughs> the red, red light. So you're going to go home and sing that now. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> sure. And you'll think of it the next time you're out of crossing. I will. Mm -hmm. I will on my way home. Um, okay, what techniques have you employed to ensure? that are children of a variety of ages will enjoy the show. Different um, types of humour. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got the whole slapstick side, which like for example where Pinocchio's running about and his nose is too long, it's like yeah. hitting everybody. Yeah. It's like Lauren Hardy. Yeah. And then you've got uh, the humor. Yeah, you've got the verbal humour like the stuff that's in the script. And like yeah. for example, where you play a woman. Yeah, you've got that. goes back to the whole pantomime that's, thing where males play That's women. funny, no matter what age you are. Yeah, exactly. And then there's also. You've got the, the toilet humour. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone looks good. Just a lot of the Smith bits. Yeah. Yeah. Not, uh, not a, like, they like. Nice yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I would agree with that, definitely. Um, in terms of characterisation, if each of you could just answer. Yeah, this. I was going to say, this is going to be difficult. Yes. Yeah. Um, how each of you approached a character or a variety of characters that you played? Obviously, Crazy, you've got quite a big Yeah, yeah, well, actually, to be fair, we were talking about this before, and the way we've come to our characterisation has been through stereotypes, is not it? Yeah, yeah. Go on, elaborate. Well, can you talk about that? Yeah, I'll talk about that. Well, basically, originally, I went for a stereotype of an old man. And Hillary was saying that it's too slow and it hasn't got very much pace. So I took that on board and tried to make Geppetto's character, because it's Pinocchio's father, obviously he's going to be like, nah, 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 don't do this, don't do that. But I was trying to make it more lively. Yeah. So give him a bit of a personality. And uh, obviously there's parts where Pinocchio copies him, which 
create a pseudomon because it's just an exaggerated version of what I'm doing. Yeah. So, yeah. I quite like that idea that you start with the stereotype and you build the yeah, character yeah. on top of that. That's I cool. definitely yeah, have something to after though. Because that's good with children's theatre because you can't really go into depth as much with yeah. characters because yeah. it's pointless because they won't no. see it. They'll just think so. But we, yeah, I was going to say stereotypes is a big part of children's theatre. Every character has to be different and people relate to different characters, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose like they, they sort of see stories like the villain. Yeah, 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 exactly. What about you? Uh, with, with the puppet, I just, to be honest, thought of a puppet. <laughs> Simple as it sounds, but like, the way they're controlled, that kind of each joint, and they're all kind of, they're, they're being held up by strings, they're technically they're falling, and it's just these things that are holding different parts of it. Uh, so I just, I haven't really thought about a person or anything from the puppet. Just, that's just the puppet the in yeah. Punch and Judy is what it is, and I remember yeah. actually going to see Punch and Judy myself. The voices that you and Bonnie have got is what I imagine Punch and Judy yeah. to be like. So I just pitch, like, yeah. <laughs> And then for the fairy, I just. Because uh, in the first audition, we played it where it was a guy that didn't want to play the fairy, and we kind of played him that and made it so it's a, it's a bit stupid, and it's just like, oh, okay then. <laughs> and he's not really sure what to think. Yeah. But from uh, the beginning, you wanted to be the fairy, didn't you? Yeah. Like I, to you. yeah, I wanted to be the fairy, but like the storytelling yeah, 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 didn't yeah. want to be. Yeah. 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 And then I just thought of that almost like a, a pantomime day. Yeah, kind of I can see that. And they go over the top, and the squeaky voice. Yeah. Mm. Lovely. Thank you very much, boys. Awesome. Well done. Thank you. Send the next picture, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm